Okay. All right, 3.4, exponential and logarithmic equations. Let's do this, right? Um, we're going to talk about exponential equations first. Um, and here, this is what an exponential equation looks like. Basically, it's when you have a variable in the equation in the exponent, right? And that variable can either appear on one side or on both sides of the equation. And the property that we use is called the one-to-one -one property, which says if the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same, right? So the idea is to get the bases to be the same. Okay. Well, then, you know, when we have a problem like this, one base is four and one base is 16, I can write the 16 as a power of 4, right? So I can say, okay, this is 4 to the x plus 2 is equal to the 16 is 4 squared x minus 3, right? And now that these are the same, I can set the exponents equal to each other. x plus 2 is 2x minus 6. Add the 6 subtract the x so x is equal to 8 okay the domain is all real numbers so there is no reason here to check for extraneous solutions in here i have two-thirds to the power of x minus 5 is equal to nine-fourths right but what's nine-fourths it's the reciprocal and the square right so nine fourths is if i took two thirds raised it to the power of two but negative two because it's also a reciprocal times three x over four okay setting these equal to each other x minus five is negative 3x over 2. We're going to cross multiply. Bring the 3 over. So 5x equals 10. x is equal to 2. OK? All right, so, so much for that. Next, look at these. Now I have equations where the variable only appears on one side of the equation. Okay, in this case, in order to get rid of a power, I need a logarithm. Okay. But what do logarithms and powers have? Bases. All right, so take a look. What's the base here? It's a four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides, but make it a log with the base of four. So I'm gonna do log base four, four to the x, is equal to log base four of 13. Okay, everybody okay so far? And now, what happens with log four, four? That goes away. So that side is just x equal to log base four of 13. Okay, on a non-calculator part of a test, this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Um, but then if you would have, if you had to convert it to decimals, you just plug it into your calculator. Okay. Are we okay with plugging into the calculator? Does anybody want me to go over that? Okay. Next, look at what I have. I have a base of E now. And what's a logarithm with a base E? It's just a what? An LN, right? So for an E, I take the ln of both sides, 
ln and e go away. 2x plus 1 is ln of 8. And now I need to solve for x, so I subtract 1. 2x is ln of 8 minus 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is ln of 8 minus 1 all over 2. Okay, please make sure, you know, like this is ln of 8 separate and then minus 1, right? You can't subtract 8 and 1, like it's not ln of 7. Okay, I know we always want to like compact things. So those are exponential equations. Well, how about logarithmic equations? Same situation, one-to-one -one property. If the logarithms are identical, then their arguments, meaning the stuff inside the log, can be set equal to each other. Okay. <clears throat> That's if you have a logarithm on both sides of the equation. But what if you only have a logarithm on one side of the equation? Well, here is what we're going to do. First, isolate the logarithm. So divide by 2, divide by 2. ln of x is equal to 9. Okay, now, here we go. This is a logarithm. And what does every logarithm have? A base. Okay, and now here's the magic question. What is a logarithm always? What is a logarithm? I actually want an answer from one of you. An guys. exponent. An exponent, okay? That means this is an exponent, and every exponent has a base. What's the base for an ln? E. That means this number, x, is equal to e to the 9, okay? The 9 is an exponent. What's the base? E, right? And that is equal, this is the value, this is the power, okay? And this is good enough. Um, even on a calculator section, you don't have to do e to the 9. That's a ridiculously large number. In calculus, we have um, answers in terms of e all the time. Like e squared minus 2 is a perfectly... Um, uh, common answer in calc. Here, isolate the log, so we're going to subtract 7. Divide by negative 3. So log 10x is equal to negative 2. Okay. A logarithm is an exponent. What's the base here? 10. So, the base to the power of the exponent is equal to the power, to the value. Okay? And so what's x? x is 10 to the negative 2 over 10. All right, now this is looking more like chemistry than anything else, right? all these negatives, uh, negative exponents. So this is, um, sorry, 10 to the power of negative 3, which is 1 over 1,000 or 1 over 10 cubed. The rule in math is we do not want any negative exponents in the answer. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Malikian. Yes. Controversy here. Yes, I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> Who's first? Adam? Uh, sure. Um, the log, how come you didn't cancel the log 10? Since it's to the base of 10, you can cancel. Um, because it wasn't just log 10, 10. It was log 10, 10 X, right? This and all of this have to be identical in order for you to cancel. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yardin, did you have a question? Yeah, could you, I know we're doing more examples, so maybe you don't have to, but just like going over like which, like where it goes, cause like going from log 10x equals negative two to 10x equals, can you just go over that one more time? Yes, this here, from here? Yeah. Yeah, yes, let's do that. 
because that's what that's the part I want you guys to get here, right? So, all right, so here's what we have. Let's just examine here. This is a logarithm. There is a base and there is the exponent. So identify the base. In this case, it's a 10. And identify the exponent. In this case, it's the negative 2. Okay? So what I say is the exponent, I'm sorry, the base to the power of the exponent is equal to this number, 10x. It would have been the same as if I had log base 3 of x is equal to 7. This is the base. This is the exponent. So now I say the base to the power of the exponent equals this. This is the power. This is what, you know, base to the exponent will equal. Okay? All right, we have one more here. We have one more. Same situation. Let's identify um, a logarithm. Here's how I think about it. A logarithm is an exponent. So that's an exponent. Every exponent needs a base. Where is the base? That's the base. So now, 5 to the power of 20, okay, is equal to the value or the power that's this number here. Okay. And now to solve for x, I have to take the fourth root of both sides. So fourth root, fourth root. So x is, what's another way to say fourth root? It's five to the power of 20 to the power of one fourth. So it's five to the five. Okay. All right, next, look at this logarithm here. The two logarithms are equal to each other. So I set the insides equal to each other. So I have x squared plus x equal to 20. And now this is a, what do you call it? Quadratic equation, x squared plus x minus 20 equals zero. Factor. And now I have x equals negative five and x equals four. Okay, here, right, especially when you, for all logarithms, but especially when you get a situation like this where you have two answers, you have to check for extraneous solutions. Okay? And so, you know, what you have to do is, you could, you could even do it mentally, but what you have to do is you have to plug each of these into the x's and make sure they're equal to each other, right? So plug in the negative 5 here. x squared plus x, does it give you 20? Yes, right? So negative 5 squared minus 5, is that equal to log of 20? And it is. Now check the 4. Log of 4 squared plus 4, is that equal to log of 20? Yes. So both of these are answers. Um, can you set it equal just to 20 and not do with the log? You can, yeah, yeah. What you have to watch out for is that they're equal and you also don't get a log of a negative number, okay? All right. Here, I have log base 2 of 5 equal to this, okay? There is a problem here in that you can only have one log on each side of the equation. 
So I need to condense this. All right. Do you remember how we condense? It's log base 2, 10 over x minus 4. Okay. And now that the logarithms are equal to each other, I can set the insides equal to each other. Cross multiply. Five times x minus four equals 10. Five x minus 20 is 10. Five x is 30 and x is 6. Okay. All right. Here, I have another logarithm, but only on one side, right? So if it's on one side, that's like what I was doing before for a and b. This is a logarithm equal to something. Well, a logarithm is an exponent. So this whole thing is an exponent. Every logarithm needs a base. What's the base for an ln? E. So the base to the power of the exponent is equal to the value or the power, which is y. And the directions here were to solve for y. And have we solved for y? Do we have something in the form of y equals something? Yes, so we're good to go. It does not have to be a numerical answer every time. All right. Um, let's take a look at some of these. Wait, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, why can it be a negative? Now take a look here. Now we're in a, a, a mess of a situation here, right? Because I have three to the power of something equal to two to the power of something. And remember how I had said to make the bases equal? Well, how do you make a three equal to a two? You can't. That means what you have to do is take the logarithm of both sides. Okay. So what I get here is ln of 3 to the power of 6x minus 3 is ln of 2 to the power of 4 minus 4x. Do you mean log or ln? ln. You could do a log 2, log base 10, log base 10. Um, the, the problem is, not the problem. Um, the point is, because the bases are not the same, no matter what logarithm you take, the bases are still not going to be the same. You're still going to have like log base 2 and log base 2. Um, it's still not going to cancel out fully. So you have the freedom to do log base anything. And ln is always more preferable. Okay? Hopefully that answers my question in the chat too, okay? Because um, ln is just log base e. So what's the difference if I take log base 2 or log base e? Okay. Um, okay. And ln, you know, it's, it's one character less, wastes less ink. So let's just go with it, right? Okay. So now we're going to use the properties of logarithms. Exponents go down and they become coefficients. Um, remember to put them in um, parentheses though. So 6x minus 3 times ln of 3 equals 4 minus 4x times ln of 2. Um, Yeah, so the reason why, the reason why we're taking the ln of both sides is because we want to get rid of this whole power business. We want to get rid of the fact that we have exponents 
with variables, right? Or variables with exponents. And the only way to get rid of exponentials is by logarithms, right? And in math, you're really allowed to do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. So since ln's, uh, I'm sorry, since logarithms are the opposite of or the inverse of exponents, that's how we can get rid of that exponent situation, right? Because the bases are not the same, I can take log of any base. So I choose log of e or ln. And if I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other side. So it's, it's you know, it's mathematically all cool, okay? All right, so now they become coefficients. And what I do is I have to distribute, all right? So now I have 6x ln of 3 minus 3 ln of 3 equals 4 ln of 2 minus 4x ln of 2, okay? And now it's a little bit of a mess. What I need to do is take everything with an x to the left side and everything else to the other side. So I have 6x ln of 3 plus 4x ln of 2. Let me write that a little bit bigger. Equal to 3 ln of 3 plus 4 ln of 2. Okay, okay, I can do this. I need to solve for x, right? So I factor out an x. Factor out an x, and I get 6 ln of 3. Ms. Well, Mike, yeah. Can you factor out a 2x because it's 6x and 4x or no? Um, no, don't, because then you have to take it back because you have to solve for x, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah is equal to 3 ln of 3 plus 4 ln of 2. And now I need to divide by this whole thing, right? So x is 3 ln of 3 plus 4 ln of 2 over 6 ln of 3 plus 4 ln of 2. Nothing here cancels, even though you really want them to cancel, but they don't, okay? And we're done, but now we have to simplify. And here's how we do that. You have to condense this, right? So these become exponents again. So it's ln of 3 cubed plus ln of 2 to the 4 over ln of 3 to the 6 plus ln of 2 to the 4. Why can't you cancel out the ln of 2 to the 4? Because they're being added to something else, right? It's ln of 2 to the 4 plus ln of 3. And you can only cancel if the whole thing on top equals something that was identical to itself on the bottom. And then, Condensing further, this is ln of 3 cubed times 2 to the 4 over ln of 3 to the 6 times 2 to the 4. And that's the final answer. Okay. That's good enough. You don't have to, um, like, multiply that out. It's too large of a number. I saw in like an answer when I was looking at stuff for the homework last night where it said it would be, after you get said there, it would be ln equals three uh, cubed times two to the four divided by three to the six times two to the four. Like there's only one ln and it's on the outside of the fraction. Is that right or wrong? Um, it would be right if it was, so if you have an ln divided by an ln, you can't simplify that. That would happen if you had like ln, you know, something minus something else, 
then you would have to do, then you could have, oh, I'm sorry. If you had this, then you could have made it into a fraction, right? Because it's ln minus ln, but ln divided by ln doesn't um, simplify any further. Okay, let's do one more, yes? Um, so here, we're going to take ln of both sides again. So I get ln of 6 to the power of 2x plus 4, 5 to the power of negative x plus 1. Okay, bring the exponents down, 2x plus 4, ln of 6, equal to negative x plus 1, ln of 5. Distribute the lns, 2x ln 6 plus 4 ln 6 equals negative x ln 5 plus 1 ln 5. Bring everything with an x to the left side. 2x ln 6 plus x ln 5 equal to, bring the 4, n, 4 ln 6 to the other side, so I have ln of 5 minus 4 ln of 6. And some of you might say, well, what if I have negative 4 ln 6 plus ln 5? Of course, that's totally fine. I just don't like starting things up with, an, uh, with a negative for some reason. It just seems so much more compact if it's like blah minus blah. I don't know. It's a math thing. Let's factor out an x, yes? Why not? x times 2 ln 6 plus ln 5 is ln 5 minus 4 ln 6. I can't tell you guys how exhilarated I am by doing this, by the way. Like inside, I am just doing cartwheels and I can't show it sitting in my chair, but I really am. I love this. Okay. All right. Moving on. Divide by the parenthesis. X equals ln of 5 minus 4 ln of 6 over 2 ln 6 plus 1 ln 5. And look, we solved for x. The question asked us to solve, and we did. Now we just have to put it in the correct format. So this is going to be ln of 5. Right now we have a minus, so it's ln of 5 over, it's 6 to the 4, over ln of 6 squared times 5. Okay. Can you leave it like that? Because you have a, you're dividing in the numerator. Yes, you can leave it like that. Yeah, because it's ln of 5 over 6 to the 4, right? So um, now I have a question. 